And I think it was Patrick Bateman who said that Genesis didn't quite get interesting until they became electrified. He was a fan of Susudio, but today we're going to have a look at this and see if we are a fan of the G80 Electrified, the all-electric version of the G80 limousine. Now before we go too far, let's cover off the key details. There is 272 kilowatts and 700 newton meters available out of the twin electric motor setup. You've got a motor at the rear, which is always on, and the one at the front comes in as you need it for performance. Giving the car a 0 to 100 kilometer an hour time of 4.9 seconds. The G80 uses the impressive Hyundai EV architecture, offering up to 350 kilowatt DC fast charging that can replenish the Genesis from 10 to 80% in a little over 20 minutes, as well as providing a handy vehicle to load function to power external devices. There is an 87 kilowatt hour battery and the car promotes a range of upward of 500 kilometers on a WLTP cycle. What does that mean? Well, you've got a massive battery pack under the floor. There's a few things about that that I'll cover off in a minute because it doesn't really work all that way, especially if you're a taller driver, but there are a lot of things to like about this car. Other key things, 13 colors. This one is Halasan Green, known for the highest peak in South Korea. There is only one specification in the luxury trim and it prices at $145,000 plus on-road costs. Now to save you a trip to the calculator, that's about 26% more expensive than the other Genesis uh, all-wheel drive G80, um, which runs in at about 101,000 plus the luxury pack to get it to about 115. As expected, the electrified G80 features a full suite of driver assistance and safety technology and has 10 airbags for occupant protection. The front seats are heated and ventilated, with the drivers offering a massage function. And in terms of technology, there's a cool 12.3 inch 3D instrument cluster, plus a 14.5 inch widescreen touch display and a pair of 9.2 inch displays for rear passengers. Audio comes via a 20 speaker 1000 watt Harman sound system. So in terms of being a luxury car, it ticks the box. So here's the key thing with the G80 Electrified. This is a long wheelbase luxury limousine. It is very soft, very comfortable, and you've got some pretty cool gadgets back here. But with the battery pack under the floor, the floor level has been raised. And if you have a look, I, my legs are barely touching this bench because my, my feet are actually quite high up as they would probably not prefer to be. The other downside is I can't even get my toes under these seats. And as a driver, when you put that seat down as low as you can, it's arguably still not as low as you'd like it to be. There's even less room for passenger toes. Now this is probably only a, an issue if you're six foot or taller, but it's definitely worth a consideration. So if the G80 Electrified is a car that you're shopping for, do sit in the back before you go anywhere and just make sure it's gonna be comfortable for what you need. Anyway, let's get up there and hit the road. Now, I think it was Rolls-Royce who once said that the only way you can tell one of their cars is on is from the ticking of the clock. Well, in the electric G80, the main reason we know the car is on is you can hear the motors of the windscreen wipers on their way down. It's kind of like a, a, a squealy, seagully noise, but it's, again, an interesting talking point to basically highlight the fact that yeah, in a full electric limo, you have a very, very quiet, pleasant, well-insulated cabin uh, with which to pick on really weird things like whiny windscreen wipers. And again, even at 100 kilometers an hour, the one thing that we can hear, I don't know if you can hear it over, the, uh, uh, over me talking, is just a little bit of wind noise uh, across the windscreen. So too is what makes the G80 electric a really, really pleasant limousine experience. Now this car with 272 kilowatts and 700 newton meters available, has, it sounds pretty impressive, but I think what is worth uh, a really key call out is how Genesis has implemented this into the car's driving behavior. In standard comfort mode, you can basically squeeze the throttle all the way up to around 80% and the car will leisurely gather pace. It, it's got power there, but it certainly doesn't shock you. If you mash your foot through to the carpet, it gets up and goes. However, if you change the car to sport mode, you end up with a really twitchy uh, throttle and really impressive throttle response. 
the car performs completely differently in both of its drive modes because for comfort it is designed for comfort it is designed to deliver a luxurious smooth driving experience and i think this is one of the benefits that electrification brings to a car like this now for all its benefits uh, as, as running as an electric car, there are a few downsides, particularly in a vehicle that would really be suited to a limousine service. Because of the electric motors and because of the battery pack, like I said earlier, the floor in the back is raised. You've got less leg room uh, and less tow room under the seats. You've also got a smaller boot for luggage, which doesn't make this a great airport transfer vehicle for a family with big suitcases. As an executive transporter, it works pretty well, but you know, horses for courses. Now the other drawback, and again, part of that raised floor because of the battery pack, is that the driver's seat here can't go as low as you'd really want it. Now I'm tall, I'm 6'3", 6'4", uh, and my hair is, is sort of scooching the roof. And you'll note too that this car doesn't have a panoramic glass roof that you'd kind of expect in a luxury limousine like this. Instead, it has a giant solar panel array on the roof, which is a pretty cool thing. Now, you can check on the menu here and see how much power that solar panel has delivered to the car. And we've just seen here, it is 11 kilowatt hours in the car's 4,000 kilometers of travel. So that is basically nothing. But in terms of it being a natural way to, to capture and store power, um, think about the car being parked. You go to the airport, you leave it outside for a couple of days, it's gonna come back with more charge than when you left it. It's actually a pretty good thing. And I guess as solar power technology gets better and better, this is the sort of thing we'd like to see on more cars. But perhaps a key role in a car like this is cruising comfort and big ticks here. We're quiet we are effortless, it is very, very comfortable. It's an easy car to drive. It's definitely better suited to uh, long mile touring than it is for short, sharp bursts up twisty mountain passes. And with its range too, you will expect to see upward of 400, it is even claimed at 520 kilometers in this car, which makes it a very, very viable uh, limousine. And if you're the driver and, and are ferrying passengers around, it does make it a far more cost-effective proposition than looking at, say, something traditional like a BMW 7 Series or, or Mercedes-Benz S-Class. But if you're looking at this as, as a personal transport vehicle and you're thinking, I want something that's big and comfortable, I want something that I can do a few hundred kilometres in without uh, breaking a sweat, and I love the idea of silence, I like a bit of tech, I don't mind a bit of power, but I don't want to spend a quarter of a million dollars on a new S-Class, then it's it's here for you. This is every day of the week a Lexus competitor if you're cross shopping. And where in the Lexus you get a hybrid, here you get a full electric proposition. And for many buyers, that's just the catalyst they need to have a look at an EV. So what do we think? Well, in terms of a car that's come obviously from an internal combustion platform, there's always gonna be compromises. And I think that high floor is just something that you do need to check out if you do want to look at a car like this. However, the way that it's priced, the equipment that it comes with, and certainly that very, very impressive Hyundai Genesis electrification platform, it's definitely worth a look at, especially if you want a large car that is full electric. Because if you're wanting something with a German badge, you are paying substantially more than this for a car like that. Will it be the uh, the head turner you like? You know what, especially in this green and some of the other cool colors it comes in, people do look. So if, like Patrick Bateman, you quite like a bit of Genesis, this one may be impressive enough to even get you a table at Dorsia. Now, if you've liked this clip or have any questions uh, about the car, hit us up in the comments, hit like, hit subscribe, come on over to drive.com.au where you can read a full review uh, of the Genesis G80 Electrified and cover all the rest of the Genesis range.